I want to remind you that we're still in this period of judges. If you remember, I showed you this cycle on your screen. It's a cycle of trouble. The Israelites would serve other gods. Their rebellion led them to oppression, and they would repent and cry out to God, and God would send a judge who would deliver them from their oppression, and the land would return to peace. In this story, the Israelites forgot about God, treating God like a genie. No fellowship or no relationship. They forsook the Lord. Chapter 7, verses 3 through 4. So Samuel said to the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all of your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only. He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. As a judge and a prophet, Samuel mediates between God and man, speaking to the Israelites on God's behalf. The verse reads, God will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Verse 6, on that day they fasted and confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. That's the point where they cry out to God. Samuel, as a priest, speaks to God on Israel's behalf representing Israel to God and God to Israel. Samuel mediates for the people by sacrificing a lamb and crying out to the Lord on Israel's behalf. And in verse 13, the lamb was sacrificed and peace was restored. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, as a leader and a judge, there was peace in the land. Chapter 7 really displays Samuel's important role as a prophet, priest, and a judge. And in this story actually lies our salvation plan. This is my favorite part in all of these presentations is finding Jesus in the text before he's arrived. We're introduced to Samuel as being in good standing with the Lord and with people. In the New Testament, in Luke chapter 3, verse 52, it says of Jesus what is said of Samuel, in favor with God and man. Love God, love people. Samuel says to the Israelites, rid yourselves of the foreign gods. And Jesus says to us, repent and believe in him rid ourselves of idolatry. Now, idolatry is anything that takes the place of God in our life. Just like the Israelites were in a cycle of trouble, we too are in a cycle of trouble until we break the cycle by finding faith in our creator. And I actually made a cycle of our own, identical to the Israelites. We are inherently prideful. That pride causes us to forget God's power. We are what we worship. So if it's not pride, then what is the idol in your life? Who we are and who we become depends on whom we love. Love God, love people. But we're selfish. We have pride. We have ego. Idolatry looks like pornography, sports, alcohol, food, weed, relationship, jobs. Elevating anything above God is an idol. Finding our identity in anything other than Christ, that's forsaking the Lord. And living apart from God leaves us distressed. We may not know it because it comes in various forms like anxiety, depression, loneliness, hopelessness. There's no fulfillment. There's never enough knowledge, money, sex, drugs. We're never fully satisfied. That's a life distressed. Just like God sent a judge, Samuel, to intercede and deliver them from affliction, God incarnate, Jesus Christ, came to earth to intercede and deliver us from affliction. That forgiveness, that redemption allows us to experience God's peace. The Israelites that day turned from their idols and confessed, we have sinned against the Lord. In Romans chapter 10 teaches us whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, saved from distress, confess that you have sinned against the Lord. And today, call on the name of the Lord like the Israelites cry out to God. 
God sent Samuel, not only as a prophet and a priest, but a judge to mediate for the Israelites. Samuel, like Moses, was appointed by God to be a mediator between God and the people. Well, Jesus Christ, a prophet, a king of priests, and the ultimate judge, savior, and deliverer is our mediator. It's through Jesus that we can come to God. In chapter 7, that sacrificial lamb that Samuel sacrificed restored and redeemed the people, bringing the people into God's peace. What we have today, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, brings restoration and redemption. Jesus applying his perfection to our imperfection. Through Jesus' righteousness covers our unrighteousness. So when God sees us covered by the blood of Jesus, his son, he sees us without sin. In fact, there's 613 laws or 613 rules in the Old Testament, and we couldn't keep them. Shoot, we couldn't even keep 10 commandments if you even read the Ten Commandments. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stole? We already broke two of them. So Jesus came to apply his righteousness to God's standards. And that's why it's important to be covered by the blood of Jesus. These laws in the Old Testament were a test and we failed. But Jesus retook the test for us. If we could be saved by following all these rules, then Jesus died in vain. Why would we need Jesus if we could just obey certain rules and make it? We wouldn't need Jesus, and that's the whole point. That's the New Testament. To be covered by the blood of Jesus is like your teacher taking the test for you because your teacher knows the answers to the test. All you have to do is hand over your paper. That's how easy it is. Hand over your heart and your mind to God. Love God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength. I love Jesus, but I drink a little.